Hello, and welcome to Offstage, uh, the show featuring Detroit area bands and musicians. And uh, today we have as our guests called Mutant Press. And uh, this here is Jerome and Rocio. And uh, these are our guests for today. <laughs> Hi there. Hi. Okay, now Mutant Press is a band that's been around for a very long time. Uh, let's see, Mutant Press began as a recording project in Hollywood, California in 1990. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I understand you've played, you've actually headlined quite a few clubs in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh, do you want to give us some names of these clubs? Well, Madame Wong's. Boy, oh boy, we've got to live there for six Regis, months. Regis, Regis. Every club there is. Great. I don't, I don't think we missed anything. Okay, and what kind of clubs have you been performing in the Detroit area? Well, Todd's, The Ritz, all the Hamtramck clubs, uh, okay. 404 Willis. Okay, we've got uh, Paychecks, uh, Todd's, Finney's, Finney's Pub, The mm -hmm. Ritz. Okay, as a matter of fact, that's where I had seen you perform was at The Ritz. Mm -hmm. And um, I just thought it was just a wonderful show, and I decided to bring you along on a show here. Um, let's see. So tell me, how did you begin um, in your musical careers? Now, you are the artist, Rocio. And uh, <laughs> you are the performer, okay? Tell me what it is that you actually do. What makes your band so different as opposed to the other bands? Well, to begin with, I am the band. I'm not in the band. I am the band, which is not meant to be egotistical. Um, there are a lot of machines in the band also, and we do consider it a band. Uh, but I'm the only musician. I program the drum machines, the sequencers, uh, I play guitar and sing. It's not wimpy synth pop. It's heavy duty stooge style rock and roll. Rocio's the artist. She has a killer slideshow of decadent things like uh, Buddhist monks burning themselves alive, Martin Luther King being attacked by status quo police dogs, and a lot of her original art. Well, I do remember from seeing you performing that I thought a lot of your things were extremely original. Um, you know, you had the music going, there was yourself playing, uh, I believe, the um, electric, uh, electronic drums or something, and um, just a one-man band in the background. You had the, uh, you had the flashes on the screen of your pictures that you had taken, and you had the music going, and um, it, was, it was quite a show. I was very, um, it just, I couldn't get my eyes off the stage. There was just so much going on the stage. I was, I was completely impressed. And uh, just for uh, two men, uh, actually two people band, <laughs> and I thought it was quite interesting. Uh, now I understand that, that you have been a musician for a very long time. Tell me how you actually got started. Mm. Let's see, you started, uh, there was uh, the Motor City Mutants, and we all know who the Motor City Mutants are, were. Do we? <laughs> we sure do, okay. And uh, if you want to tell me how you actually got started in all this. I know you've been around for a long time. In, music, in Detroit, in, in, in music in general. Tell, tell me how you started. I mean, were you like five years old and you started playing something, or uh, how did it get going? <laughs> Actually, I was seven. Uh huh. I was sort of a, a high energy young person. My parents, who are psychologists, thought it might be wise to buy me a snare drum. <laughs> so that was sort of a healthy outlet for my uh, uh -huh. aggression or whatever. Okay. <laughs> so I banged on that for a couple of years and then took. Uh, piano lessons from Mrs. Keppel, who taught me classical, and I lasted two weeks and performed a, <laughs> a, a boogie-woogie number, uh -huh. a real cool le left-handed New Orleans boogie-woogie boogie -woogie number, and everyone else played Chopin, and she said she couldn't teach me anymore. Oh, no. <laughs> but she did teach me a lot of good theory, which I still use. Oh, sure, sure. And about a year later, I picked up a guitar listening to Blues Guys, Howling Wolf, Muddy Waters, Bo Diddley, and the early uh, Southern California Surf Guys. Okay. Okay, and uh, let's see now, how did you get started, Rosu? Now you're an artist. Mm -hmm. What kind of things, um, you know, when people say artist, are you, um, do you do sculptures? Do you do paintings? Are you a photographer? What is it that you like to do? Sí, bueno, uh, quiero mandar primero un saludo a todas las personas de habla hispana que nos están viendo en California, en Miami, aquí en Detroit. Todo sabe? <laughs> she's speaking Spanish, if you don't realize that. She sí. speaks primarily Spanish. Uh, uh, she's quite a well-known artist in, in Mexico. 
Sí, yo soy artista de México, eh, de la Ciudad de México. Eh, estudié en Esmeralda, es an important school in, in Mexico City. Uh -huh. And in English, in English. In English. <laughs> well, I have my accent, so I don't like to speak English. Okay. Um, All right. She doesn't like to speak English. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's fine. Um, I would like to say, uh, let's see. Now you have appeared on TV many times. What are some of the shows? I've got shows here. Um, let's see. The Daryl Field Show. Um, that was in Hollywood. He was a local uh, Jimi Hendrix imitator in Hollywood who had oh, his own cable TV show. Uh -huh. And when was this? What year was this? That was 1990. Uh-huh. Uh, let's see. Now, you were also on Rock Talk, mm -hmm. and that's uh, filmed out of uh, Hollywood, California. I think that's um, Shane Michaels, if I remember. Okay. And uh, what was uh, interesting about that show? That was kind of funny because they had a, a thumbs up or a thumbs down thing. Uh-huh. Uh, we were interviewed for a while. And then supposedly they ran the vi video for the public, and uh, what do they call it? It was make it or break it or something. And they were kind and gave us the thumbs up. Okay. Um, and I guess that's seen in a lot of different cities. But, uh, <laughs> so have you basically toured uh, in the Detroit area and the California areas? Have you been to other states um, that you've been, or is it basically kind of, you know, Detroit and the West Coast? The band's first job was Mexico City. We were the headlining international act for two nights at the Luke in Mexico City. Mm -hmm. Which we will be showing clips from them playing live in Mexico City. Yeah, it's fairly flawed, but you get the <laughs> idea. <laughs> it's a great tape. Okay. We played Hollywood probably 30 or 50 different clubs. Mm -hmm. Played the Ritz in New York City. Oh. Played uh, probably 30 clubs in Detroit. What was uh, what are some of your favorite clubs you've ever performed at, and and why are they your favorites? Is it is it basically the crowd um, that makes you just really want to go back to that club, or what is it that just makes a great night of playing? Oh, uh, well, I think I rock. I rock was a, a nice one, and I rock. Excuse no me. Well, one of the tapes that's available is live in the Motor City, which was recorded at I rock. Great. Now, where where is that tape available at? Um, repeat the beat. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's Sands, Jams, all yeah. the Royal Oak okay. places. Well, you can call uh, to our telephone. Okay. Fleetish Records. We are okay. Fleetish Records. Five four three six one one two. We can send it to you. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> okay. Five four three six one one two. And uh, you're welcome to call that number if you want in more information. Um, and I do suggest that you give their tapes a try because they're uh, they're a very unique type of music, and. Um, and uh, they're really quite interesting. Um, I know you've had some write-ups in the newspaper about your act. Um, mm -hmm. I know that uh, Jam Ray has written about you in the Metro Times. And uh, tell me some of the things that they were saying about you. Well, Detroit has been quite kind to us. Um, this act is the type of thing that you either think is really super interesting, because it is very, very original. I don't think there's anything like it. And on the other hand, if you don't think it's great, you think it stinks. <laughs> There's been nothing in the middle so far. Um, one perspective is, uh, don't you have any friends? How come uh, you're the only person? And the other perspective is people are just amazed. They stand there in a line watching and sort of looking for other people. Uh -huh. um, it's been called the one-man killer music machine here. Mm -hmm. Um, We've got some, uh, let's see, you can hand me that flyer that's right behind you hanging up. There was a... This one? A, yes, there was a write-up or something I was reading as we were hanging it up today. Um, let's see, this is from IROC. This is the IROC Cafe you played at. Mm -hmm. That was uh, sometime in February. Uh, we've got a little write-up here. I'll read really quick. Uh, the night began with the Mutant Press, a one-man musical machine, as Jerome T. Youngman. Uh, Mutant Press, and immediately won the crowd over with his killer version of I Want to Be Your Dog. That's the name of a tune. Okay. A Followed up with a killer Willie Dixon tribute, Spoonful. Uh, then came a fantastic set of originals, Do the Mutant Press. Uh, Bob had a gerbil. Um, That's one of the new releases also. <laughs> I have to say, Bob Hit a Gerbil is the most interesting song I've ever heard. I don't know if I could call it a song, I don't know what to call it. <laughs> we're not pro, we're not anti, 
It's merely a social commentary, folks. Okay. Bob had a gerbil. <laughs> Call us up and we'll uh, send you it. Audience, let your mind ramble on what you think that means. Um, uh, Richard Gere out there, no. <laughs> um, no, <laughs> just that, kidding. Just yeah. kidding. <laughs> However it moves you, um, Okay, and, uh, and you've got another tune out called... Uh, Oh well, I okay. I can't say that on the air right now, I but <laughs> no, I can't say that on the air. Um, <laughs> but you'll have to listen to the tape, at least read the tape, and see what the name of some of these tunes are. And um, speaking of tunes, that we're going to take a quick break, and we're going to show you some clips from them playing live in Mexico City, mm -hmm. and we're just going to see what kind of show that Mutant Press actually puts on. Okay, let's take a look at that. was a clip that we were watching of Mutant Press. That was a great show playing over there live in Mexico City. And uh, so tell me, tell me about your experience at the at this taping that you were doing in Mexico City. What was some really uh, uh, some fantastic things that just sticks out in your head that you can remember of it? Well, I had one of the more interesting groupy experiences <laughs> of my life, which I did not pursue. <laughs> yeah. Um, very seriously, the, the first night after I walked off stage, it was the place holds about 500 people. It was super packed, super smoky, a big stage. 
the Bambi Forest just chopped chickens' heads off and there's blood <laughs> everywhere. Oh my this, God. This girl in a little short mini skirt with a black Gestapo hat on. As soon as I went behind stage after the first song, I thought I was going to die. She crawls back and in a broken English accent says, let's do something very strange. <laughs> and, and, I, and I said, I have to rest. I have to rest because oh. R Rocio is my wife. That is a secret. <laughs> it has been a secret up until now. And at that point, we were not married. But I knew that would be the end of things. <laughs> so as, as this girl's approaching me, I'm inching back closer to the wall. And finally, she just has me pinned. And at that point, Rocio tears around the corner. It saved him. But you I, saved him? You saved him? <laughs> that's a matter of perspective. Oh, Lord. I exercised the good judgment not to partake of this young lady's charm. Charm? Just charm. Which did take a lot of willpower. So that was one of the interesting things. Well, I think your wife is quite beautiful, and I don't think, uh, I don't think any of those groupies can compare. Correct? Thank you. <laughs> no matter how short those skirts are. <laughs> well, everything's a trade-off, hey, hey, okay, you know? Next, okay, what's the next subject here? <laughs> okay, so tell me about your plans for the future. Um, are you uh, laying any more tracks down? Are you writing songs right now? Um, are you working on any projects, mm -hmm. if, you know? Speak in Spanish if you want, but we actually speak <laughs> <for> English, but... <laughs> oh, well, yes, I'm trying to make different art the, the for art the show. background, the art for the art show. Okay. Uh, more original, uh, close-ups, for example, or different stuff to make everything uh, change mm -hmm. and everything always new for the people who go to see us. Uh -huh. And we're, we're uh, writing new songs, too, about uh, black poetry with black uh -huh. poems and we are making compositions and uh, inter very interesting things. Well, the song she's referring to is a new song that we have not performed live yet. It's called Ultra Black. Um, we have a 60s book of quote unquote revolutionary black poets, mm -hmm. which we took lines from. It's very, very good imagery and combine that with a surf song called Wipeout which is a drum solo, uh -huh. but we have a drum machine oh, that's I playing a drum solo. <laughs> so conceptually, I thought that was a riot. Oh, yeah. Probably, nobody else probably caught that, but that's the song we've collaborated on, and she's going to be uh, the second lead vocal on the recording. Because <laughs> uh -huh. well, her sure accent comes that. through. It's charming. <laughs> <laughs> she uh, can't really carry yeah. a tune, and she's got the honky beat. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, part of the problem is she's got to sync it with the yeah, drums and go like this. I always go in the grown direction. Grown but direction. when we mix the vocals, the accent, that's real charming, the way it comes across. So. Yeah. Great. The important thing is we continue working and we are doing new things, new stuff for Mutant Press. We're yeah. thinking of throwing an art show. Uh -huh. I mean, Mutant Press is primarily music. It's multidimensional, but it, the focus is musical with art. And with philosophy, if you need philosophy, we're thinking about maybe changing the perspective mm -hmm. to present it as an art show mm -hmm. that sort of has music, which might be less, uh, I don't know, less disturbing to people. <laughs> P people don't know what to think of this project. Uh, mouths are wide open, and it doesn't fit any category. And that's exciting from the artistic standpoint because it's new territory and it's not the same thing over oh, and sure. over and over. But people say, is it techno rock? Is it punk rock? Is it heavy metal? And it's some of all of that. But we just play what we like to play and what, what makes our, mm -hmm. our feet move and our hearts go bang, bang. And yeah, we're trying to be in another stage of the art. So performing art with imagining, with the music, with the lights. And, of course, the people, when they go to see it, they, they can have the music and they will like it, but they can have the message, too, because that's important for the art, to okay. communicate things. So yeah. it kind of sounds like uh, um, if you do have a following, that your following will never see the same show twice, correct? Mm, mm -hmm. We're not quite to that point, <laughs> but uh, some of the basics we keep. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Okay. The concept of Newton Press. <laughs> okay. Great, great. Speaking of concepts, if there is a concept, which there, there may or may not be, if you need a concept, the, the concept is all press is mutant. 
government is mutant. Religion is mutant. Every time somebody has a program that they want to run on you, it could be a sales pitch, it could be a religious pitch, um, it's self-serving. They want something from you. They want your time, they want your money, they want your body. I don't know what they want. And if you're comfortable with giving that to them, I guess I'm speaking to the government mostly now. I, my taxes are about to go up, <laughs> That's right, and my car insurance time. is about to go up, and I am outraged as these clowns in Washington get all these perks and Tweedledee and Tweedledum who are running for air. Well, that's, you know, that's just the concept of America. It's just kind of you know what Ed take it or leave it. You, you know, know what Ed Saunders said about America? Ed Saunders from the Fugs. He goes, whoever designed a system where you're always voting for the lesser of evils. There's a little more to it, but that's, is this a system? Thank you. <laughs> Next presidential candidate for the Not year yet. 2000. <laughs> I have to white, whitewash my... This will be the first lady, and uh, we'll take your votes, okay? <laughs> okay, let's see. Now tell me, um, where are some places that you'll be playing, uh, upcoming play dates that you'll be playing that uh, we could tell people to go out and see you? Well, by the time the show airs, the next one that will probably be happening is the Old Miami Bar, April 17th. Okay, that's in Detroit on Cass Avenue. Right. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a pretty outrageous place. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> uh, this Saturday we're going to Ann Arbor for the Hash Bash. Oh, the Hash Bash. Uh, tell me what's, uh, what, what's this Hash Bash? I've, I've heard about it all the time. I've never been to it. And um, well, since, tell me about it. Since approximately the middle, six, middle 30s, excuse me, hemp has been illegal. Hemp prohibition. Okay. Um, if anybody needs any historical reason to allow this to be okay, George Washington grew hemp, um, Thomas Jefferson grew hemp. I mean, I'm not, I'm not pushing any cause here. Everybody should do what they need to do, but I don't think people need laws to uh, govern their, their private lives, and that's one of the laws that's... So that's what brought on this hash bash, and what is it that you actually do? Oh, it's um, about 20 years old, the hash so, bash. So what can someone expect when they go to this hash bash? Is, as you said, where? In Ann Arbor? This the 4th, it's in Ann Arbor. The mm -hmm. 30th of last month, it was uh, at Wayne State. It's a month program. It's all out throughout the country. And they have, uh, what, bands that keep playing right. throughout? Right. There are petitions that will be signed to legalize oh, yeah. things. Uh -huh. the, the drug war that the country's waging is ridiculous, of course, because it's, it's not working for one thing, plus it's completely the wrong approach. Mm -hmm. um, things need to be legalized. And again, that's the lesser of evils. It's not the perfect solution, but it takes the crime out of things. Uh, this fool government could tax it. Um, I mean, there's a million reasons. Old ladies are not going to get clocked on the head so a guy can, uh, has to rob their wallet to pay too much for, for whatever he's into. Hopefully, right. a person would have no vices right. at all. But, uh, well, that's a personal choice. It's not a governmental choice. Sure. Right. Okay. So we're going to go and sit around, listen to speakers, uh -huh. uh, partake of perhaps a few spiritual condiments, and uh, just enjoy ourselves. And Sounds like fun. Well, everyone, now uh, you hear that, uh, go and check out the hash bash going on in Ann Arbor. I just might do that myself. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, let's see, you have a tape in your hand here. I know you've oh, been yeah. holding on to it uh, to show the audience, or, yeah. or maybe because you're uh, just... Do you want that to be shown? <laughs> here, well, let's see, yeah. pass that down here. Let's read a few of the songs that are on the tape. We've yeah. got, uh, this is uh, the one that I've got, Mutant Press. Uh, the title of this tape is... Um, <laughs> it's hot The title to handle. of the tape is so hot, hot, hot I'm afraid to say it here. <laughs> title of the tape is called Safe Sex Sucks, and, um... This has been rather controversial. Okay, it's quite a controversial title here. It's not um, pro-death. <laughs> it's merely a social commentary. Once again, it's a okay. complaint. Okay, let's listen to some of these here. We've got Voice of God. We've got I'm Not a Juvenile Delinquent. Um, what's so hot about being cool? Uh, Planet Earth, Walking Around, Touching Tongues. What a name of a title for a song. Uh, That's a Motor City Mutant song. Uh, let me go. Dark messages from the dead. I mean, we're talking about some heavy-duty, interesting, ultra-interesting. Let's turn on this tape and sit down and kick back and listen to it. 
Um, I, like I don't. Her. These might have uh, messages to them. These songs. Uh, they were. You know, your, your show that I had seen was quite interesting. I was just completely mesmerized watching your show and trying to catch in the words of, the, of <laughs> your songs, and uh, it was quite interesting. So, everyone, if you want to check out the Mutant Press, you have, uh, what, two other tapes out besides this one? What are the other tapes called? Okay, Bob Had a Gerbil is a single tape that has... Uh, Back to that gerbil again. <laughs> cool, it has cool people and a new song called Do the Mutant Press on it. Do the Mutant Press? And right. Uh, what, is that kind of a dance tune that kind of sounds like, let's do the Mutant Press? Is that kind well, of <laughs> well... Okay. And the third one is Live in the Motor City, which is recorded at IROC. At IROC, okay. IROC's on Detroit. Where's that at in Harper? Well, we're not promoting that club anymore. They were nice to us the first time, but they weren't that nice to us the second time. So, uh, <laughs> well, <laughs> now, Tim's Rock, nice. if you're listening. No, <laughs> Thank you, Tim. Thanks. We like you. <laughs> okay, so um, so you're still writing songs, and you're doing new artwork, and you have things planned, and you sound to be two pretty busy people. Um, now, do you plan on keeping the Mutant Press just a two-member band? Do you plan on adding more people, or do you like it just the way it is? Mm -hmm. Well, sometimes we have uh, dancers who enjoy the team, <laughs> uh -huh. and sometimes we have more singers, singer, black singers, uh -huh. who make rap and, and uh -huh. other stuff. And sometimes we have more people, sometimes there are people for many reasons, because all the people have different uh, work, of, they go, go away, but uh -huh. we continue, and, and we like when people come and work with us, and then go. Great. Oh, Great. We like it the way it is. Mutant Press did not start out as one musician. I had a couple of different partners who flaked out for different reasons. These people had a million reasons why we could not do this. These people were all replaced by machinery who are more efficient and who are never late for rehearsals, who never drink too much, who are never hung over. Um, at first it was sort of quirky. There was another original band I had called Too Many Gods before this, which was also just me. Um, now, it has shaped our sound, and I suppose if I could find people who could play as well as machines, who had their egos in their back pockets... Which is hard to find. Oh, musicians are <laughs> so messed up. Well, I, if, okay, let's not generalize. I'm sorry. If, okay. if one needs to generalize, there are a fair, more than their share of flakes in acting, music, okay. entertainment in general. So I, I prefer machinery. Yeah, I was um, quite amazed uh, when I had spoken to you before I had gone out to see you play, and um, I was qu I was quite shocked to see that um, you know there was just there was just you on the stage, and you had all this kind of things going on. You had these films and music and lights, and it was it was very very interesting. And um, so anyone out there, if you would like to um, go and see Mutant Press, keep an eye out. Check the papers; they're always in the papers. Um, uh, Metro Times. Uh, that's a very good newspaper to check out, uh, play dates, and um, I hope that you really go to check out Mutant Press. They're really a show to see, and they're really a lot of fun, and take a lot of friends and go and see them, and I'm, I am sure you'll have a great time. Um, I surely did. And uh, so also keep an eye out for their cassette tapes that are available again. Where are they available at? Uh, Sam's, Sam's Jams. Sam's Jams, repeat to be uh, okay. second time around. Mm -hmm. Beat oh. Hotel, Beat Hotel. Yeah, Beat Hotel. Great, and that's off uh, Phlebas Records, correct? Phlebas Records, right. Okay, great. Well, thank you again for joining us at Offstage. I'm your host, Michelle Wozniak, and this is Jerome Youngman and Rocio. Thank you, Michelle. <laughs> okay, thank you. It was a really great time. <laughs> thank you again, everyone, for joining Offstage. I look forward to having you watch <laughs> the show again. If there's any uh, bands and musicians or entertainers out there who would be interested in appearing on Offstage, please, uh, you can contact Omnicom and watch the end of the show for the address that you can contact. And thank you again for watching Offstage. See you later.